The world as we know it has unremittingly endured wars across the globe, across time, and across a wide array of ideologies. The second member of this trifecta is a phenomenon that encompasses a multitude of developments one of which is the advancements of technologies which have really played no little role in their involvement in wars or conflicts. But of all the innumerable technologies developed along the spectrum of time, there is one that humanity has constructed that terrifyingly has given mortal man destructive powers resembling any religious entity ordained to bring about the divine coming of an apocalyptic Armageddon. On July 3rd, 2017, the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute launched an annual nuclear data program which highlighted the current trends and developments in the contemporary world's nuclear arsenals. The data showed a total of nine countries possessing nuclear weapons, the United States and Russia collectively having 93% of all nuclear warheads, with a grand total of 13,000. 800. After World War II, the United Nations was set up as a body to promote and maintain international peace and security, but it didn't seem to alleviate all the tensions between the nations, nor seize the production of nuclear weapons. Since 1946, there have been nearly 11 incidences of a near nuclear apocalyptic event, with many coming so close that the decision of one person may have changed the course of our history. One of those men was Vasily Arkhipov. At the height of the Cuban Missile Crisis, Soviet patrol submarine B-59 almost launched a nuclear-tipped torpedo while under harassment by American naval forces. The B-59 was one of several vessels surrounded by American destroyers near Cuba. The Russian B-59 dove to avoid detection, but was unable to communicate with Moscow for a number of days. The USS Beale, as a response, began dropping practice depth charges left and right into the water to signal the B-59 to surface. However, the Soviet submarine took these to be real depth charges, powerful and destructive hydraulic shock waves designed to destroy submarines, with low batteries affecting the submarine's life support systems, and without orders from Moscow, the commander of the B-59 believed that war may have already begun, and he ordered the use of a 10 kiloton nuclear torpedo against the American fleet. The submarine's political officer agreed, but luckily, the commander of the subflotilla, Vasily Arkhipov, persuaded the captain to surface and await orders. This effectively may have averted an all-out nuclear war, which probably would have ensued if the nuclear torpedo would have been launched. With far too many close calls to an apocalyptic event, has the international community been able to forge a path to resolve such a potentially devastating scenario? Well, maybe, in the most ironic way, the deterrence of an all-out nuclear war may be in the possession of the nuclear weapons themselves. With respect to diplomatic relations, a theory called nuclear peace argues that under some circumstances, nuclear weapons can induce stability and decrease the chances of crisis escalation. In particular, nuclear weapons are said to have induced stability during the Cold War, when both the US and USSR possessed mutual second strike retaliation capability, eliminating the possibility of nuclear victory for either side. Proponents of nuclear peace argue that controlled nuclear proliferation may be beneficial for inducing stability. Critics, on the other hand, argue that nuclear proliferation not only increases the chances of interstate nuclear conflict, but increases the chances of nuclear material falling into the hands of violent, non-state groups. On one hand, experts argue that more may be better, contending that new nuclear states will use their acquired nuclear capabilities to deter threats and preserve peace. And on the other hand, some experts argue that more will be worse, since new nuclear states often lack adequate organizational controls over their new weapons, which makes them high risk for either deliberate or even accidental nuclear war, or even theft of nuclear material. It would also seem that nuclear peace theory only applies to opposing nations that both possess nuclear weapons. A study published in the Journal of Conflict Resolution in 2009 quantitatively evaluated the nuclear peace hypothesis and found support for the existence of what is known as the stability-instability paradox. The study determined that while nuclear weapons promote strategic stability and prevent large-scale wars, they simultaneously allow for lower-intensity conflicts. When a nuclear monopoly exists and there is opposition between two states, the one one state that has nuclear monopoly will use it against its opponent. In contrast, when there's mutual nuclear weapon ownership with both states possessing nuclear weapons, the odds of war drop significantly. However, one must always assume the existence 
of other variables. We must realize that actors, politicians, are not always rational. There's always an element of uncertainty. One cannot always control emotions, subordinates, and equipment. Information can be faulty and misleading. Time and high stakes present unwanted escalations of irrationality and misperception. But this escalation of irrationality and misperception could be a good thing. In a document called The Essentials of Post-Cold War Deterrence created by Strategic Advisory Group, also known as SAG, it states, The fact that some elements may appear to be potentially out of control can be beneficial to creating and reinforcing fears and doubts in the minds of an adversary decision maker. This essential sense of fear is the working force of deterrence, that the US may become irrational and vindictive if its vital interests are attacked, should be part of the national persona we project to all adversaries. In other words, the level of nuclear deterrence is actually heightened, and the greater a nation is at being unpredictable and seemingly uncalculated and impetuous, there still remains thousands of active nuclear warheads. Yet, since World War II, not a single nuclear weapon has been used against another nation. While many generals and political figures have considered their use in tactical strikes, game theorists, luckily, have convinced them otherwise. In particular, Game Theory states that the entire scare during the Cold War was built around the idea of a mutually assured destruction. Mad. The idea was that as soon as one side launched a nuclear strike, the other side would respond with a nuclear strike of its own. Hence, if either side chose to launch a nuclear strike, both sides would see enormous losses. This would produce what would be known as a Nash equilibrium in which neither side would ever initiate a nuclear strike. In other words, when both opponents possess the same strategy, neither side really has anything to gain by deploying that strategy, and therefore the best course of action is to do nothing. Game theory may then prove a possible malice, a forethought, a guilty mind, in a potential wicked plot obscurely composed by the United States. In 1945, the United States acquired a monopoly on the atomic bomb, dropped one on Hiroshima and another on Nagasaki, showcasing to the world their militaristic superiority and ending the world war. Once the war was over, the anti-communist sentiment that arose in the early parts of the 20th century still lingered and incited fear in Europe and North America, proposing that there undoubtedly existed an imminent Soviet expansion and that there existed, as a result of the expansion, an inevitable war to come. Concerned scientists and pacifists were evaluating the potential of a preventative nuclear war with the Soviets before the Soviets could get their hands on nuclear weapon technology. The United States, exercising the power of the atomic bomb monopoly, was so close indeed of launching a preemptive nuclear strike against the Soviets that it should be considered a miracle that the US did not follow through with the plan, but maybe they just couldn't. But before we get into that, to demonstrate how close and how desirable an attack on Russia was with monopolized nuclear arms, we will read a quote from Bertrand Russell, a man who shared a common sentiment with the people of post-World War II. Let me remind you, Bertrand Russell was a prominent political activist in the 20th century and was a man who was initially jailed for opposing the First World War as a pacifist. He was not a warmonger nor a supporter of wars, but nevertheless he shared his common feelings during the post-World War II climate when he hauntingly wrote Russia is sure to learn soon how to make it, indicating the atomic bomb. I think Stalin has inherited Hitler's ambition for world dictatorship. One of us expect a war between USA and USSR, which will begin with the total destruction of London. I think that the war will last 30 years and leave a world without civilized people, from which everything will have to be built afresh. There is one thing, and only one, which could save the world, and that is a thing which I should not dream of advocating. It is that America should make war on Russia during the next two years and establish a world empire by means of the atomic bomb. 